Your TV doesn't just know what you watch. It knows when you laugh, when you get bored, and soon what makes your pupils dilate. And all of that is being sold to strangers you've never even met. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you the real receipts. How a single movie night can create a second by second profile of you, then follow you from your living room to your phone, to your laptop, and even into the stores you visit. You're gonna learn the spy trick that keeps TVs listening even when they look off, and the six countermeasures that can rip your living room right out of the surveillance economy by tonight. I spent 15 years in cybersecurity uncovering the systems companies hope you'll never notice, and honestly, this is one of the most shocking I have ever seen. If you peel back the bezel of a modern TV, you'll find a full-on computer inside, with sensors tucked right into the frame, planted in the most private room of your house. Even mid-range TV sets now pack far-field mics, often in the TV or the remote listening for voice commands, cameras on some models for gesture controls or logins, presence sensors that can tell when someone's in the room, sometimes even picking up subtle movement, and Wi-Fi radios, which are constantly talking to your network and to nearby devices. The software is where things really shifted. Modern TV operating systems like Tizen, WebOS, Roku OS, and Android and Google TV, they all ship with ad tech and telemetry pipelines baked right in. And the centerpiece of this technology is automated content recognition, or ACR. Think of it like Shazam, but for video. It fingerprints whatever's on your screen. That could be live TV, streaming apps, HDMI inputs, game consoles, everything. And here's the real jaw dropper. Some setups can capture up to 7,200 screenshots per hour. That's two every single second, just to identify exactly what's playing with frightening precision. Imagine your TV snapping more selfies in a single hour than you've taken all year, and each one gets sent to strangers for analysis. Samba TV has even bragged about tracking 13.5 million US TVs through interactive opt-ins. Once ACR sends that viewing history home, it gets tied directly to your household identity, your network, devices, and from there, it doesn't just stay in your living room, it follows you. If the pipeline is this advanced, what's the payoff for the companies running it? And why is your privacy priced like a throwaway line item? The going rate for your household second by second viewing history is about one cent per day. That's what it came out to in the FTC's case against Vizio. One cent bought advertisers the entire map that included what you watched, when you changed channels, how long you lingered on an ad, plus demographic tags like your income, age bracket, your family size, even what you've bought recently. And then that enriched profile gets resold over and over and over again. For TV makers, this is the business model. Hardware profits are razor thin, so the real money comes after the sale. Those pennies scale into millions when every connected set is pulling double duty as an ad targeting engine. It's why even so-called premium models still flood you with home screen ads and baked in content suggestions you never asked for. And that's why the second you plug it in, the default settings start funneling your data out. If they're getting that much value just from your screen time, how do they connect it to the rest of your digital life? How does your TV follow you to your phone and beyond? The handoff is simple and it doesn't require any secret hacking. Your TV and your phone share the same Wi-Fi network. That means the same public IP address which ad networks treat like your household's fingerprint. If the TV's ACR reports that household X just watched a Toyota ad, that ID gets instantly matched to every other device on your network. So the next time that you scroll Instagram or browse the news, those car ads are already waiting for you. Some companies skip the guesswork entirely. Vizio was documented sending IP addresses straight to data brokers who match them with shopping histories, income ranges, and other personal details. That enriched file powers ad targeting across all your devices. And when Wi-Fi matching isn't enough, there's ultrasonic beaconing, which is high frequency tones that you can't hear, but your phone's microphones definitely can. If an app with mic permissions detects it, the system logs that you were in the room for a specific ad and then tracks what you did after that. The FTC has already warned developers about the practice. And here's how that tracking you part extends into the real world. When you walk into a store, location data from apps on your phone can confirm you visited, tying it back to the ad that you saw on your TV in the first place. Retailers call this football attribution and it's how they measure whether the ad actually got you through the door. Your TV time becomes the spark for a cross-device campaign that follows you through apps, browsers, and even into those brick-and-mortar stores. But here's the twist. Even if you hit the power button, the spying game might not stop. In one case, it took a leaked CIA document to prove it. Hitting the power button might make you feel safe, 
but most smart TVs don't actually shut down. In 2017, leaked CIA files revealed Weeping Angel, a tool built for Samsung TVs that made them pretend to be off while quietly recording conversations through their microphones. It's worth noting that this was a leaked proof of concept from many years ago, targeting certain Samsung models, not something running on every TV, but it did show the capability was real and within reach without you even knowing. The screen stayed black and the power light stayed dark, but inside the network card and processor were still awake, quietly sending data out. And that's not just some spy agency one-off. In standby mode, most TVs keep Wi-Fi and Bluetooth active so they can grab overnight updates or respond to voice commands. If your model has far-field voice control, the mics are always listening for the wake word, just like your Alexa or a voice assistant device, unless you physically cut the power or turn off the feature in settings. Researchers have even found vulnerabilities shipped right from the factory. One TCL model came with an insecure web server that gave outsiders file system access. It was silently patched later, which is the same kind of mechanism that could be used to install surveillance tools without your knowledge or consent. If they can listen while the screen is black, what happens when it's on and they're actually watching you watch? The next phase of TV tracking isn't about what you watch, it's about how you feel while you're watching it. Advertisers are already testing emotion sensing systems that read micro expressions, gaze direction, and even pupil dilation. Next week, we're gonna go deep into that last one, pupil tracking. So if you wanna see that breakdown, subscribe so you don't miss it. Companies like Affectiva and Realize have run large scale ad experiments using webcams and built in cameras to decide in real time which ad to show next. Your reactions happen fast, sometimes within milliseconds, before you consciously register that you like or dislike something. And that's gold for anyone trying to sell you more or shape your behavior. And it's not just about product preferences. Your gaze patterns can reveal health conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, PTSD triggers, fatigue, even intoxication. And that's the kind of information that could be worth far more to an insurer or political consultant than to a shoe brand. So once your gaze profile exists, it's as unique as your fingerprint. It can follow you across devices, across platforms, and even into real world interactions. And just to be clear, TVs aren't widely reading your eye movements yet, but the patents, prototypes, and industry demos show exactly where this tech is headed, and that's why it matters now. If they can predict your desires and health before you know them yourself, how could they use that power to steer your choices? Once your TV knows both what you watch and how you react, it's not hard to weaponize that data. Retailers already A-B test product images until they find the exact color, lighting, or camera angle that makes your eyes linger just a fraction of a second longer. And that's the one you'll start seeing everywhere. From your home screen to your Instagram feed, that image becomes the one they push. Dating apps can reorder profiles based on which faces trigger micro eye movements linked to attraction, sliding those most compatible matches right up to the top. And that's whether or not they're actually people you'd choose without that little algorithmic nudge. Political campaigns can take it even further. Two neighbors could both watch the same campaign ad, but yours is laced with imagery engineered to make you feel hopeful, while theirs is tuned to stir fear. Neither of you ever sees the other's version. The manipulation is invisible. Cross-app profile merging makes this even more powerful. If one platform knows which faces make you smile and another knows which products make you pause, Merging that data creates a psychological blueprint of you, one that can be sold, rented, or used to push you toward outcomes you didn't even realize were being planted. If all of this feels unstoppable, remember, the same technology that makes tracking so easy also makes blocking it simple, if you know where to look. How do you kick the spies out of your living room starting today? Here's the step-by-step -step playbook to get your TV out of the surveillance economy and keep it there. And if you need some extra help, I have a guide you can download to walk you through securing your TV. The link's below. Step one, make off actually off. Most TVs pretend to shut down. The simplest fix is to plug your TV into a power strip you can flip off after use. That cuts electricity completely, so no sneaky standby tracking. If you have a voice activated remote, know that the mic is likely always listening unless you cut the power or turn off the feature in settings. Step two, shut down the data pipelines. Your TV's settings menu hides the switches that stop most tracking. They're often buried, so look for these exact names. If you have a Vizio TV, it's Smart Interactivity. If you have LG, it's known as Live Plus or Voice Information. If you have Samsung, it's Viewing Information Services and any voice control options. If you have Roku TVs or like TCL, Hisense, etc., 
Smart TV experience is what it's called. Turn them off. And if the setting comes back on after an update, turn it off again. Step three, keep it offline when possible. If you don't use the TV's built-in apps, don't connect it to Wi-Fi at all. Use it like a monitor and run everything through a streaming stick or a box you control. Step four, put it on its own Wi-Fi. If you must connect your TV to the internet, give it its own Wi-Fi network. Most routers have a guest network option. That keeps it from sharing data directly with your phone or laptop. Step five, use a privacy-friendly streaming device. Instead of letting the TV handle streaming, connect an external device. The best option is Apple TV. It has the most privacy controls. Other like good-ish okay options are the Roku stick, Amazon Fire TV, but just make sure you turn off tracking in their settings as well. Step six, know which TVs to keep and which to replace. So you're gonna wanna replace or isolate Vizio, Samsung, LG, Roku brand TVs, TCL, especially older Android TV models, and bargain bin brands. These are the most aggressive trackers. Some safer bets are gonna be Sony Bravia, Panasonic, or any display without built-in mics or cameras. Still, turn off tracking and keep them on a separate network. The best options are a, a dumb commercial display or an older pre-smart TV with an external streamer that you control. Every one of these steps makes tracking harder, more expensive, and less profitable for the companies watching you. One black rectangle in your living room just walked you through the blueprint for the modern surveillance state. Now you've seen exactly how it works. Your smart TV is really a computer with sensors, cameras, mics, and motion detectors, logging what happens in your home. And automatic content recognition fingerprints everything you watch and sells it for pennies, even though it's worth much more to advertisers and data brokers. And cross-device tracking ties that viewing history to your phone, laptop, and even your in-store purchases. Fake off modes prove you can't always trust a power light. And the next phase, tracking your emotions and health before you even realize it yourself. So here's the real takeaway. Your TV isn't special. The exact same playbook runs on smart speakers, cars, wearables, game consoles, even offline devices that light up the moment they're plugged in. They're all just different entry points into the same connected surveillance infrastructure. Every week, I break down one of these systems, showing you where the sensors hide, what data they take, and how it's used. If you understand how one device works, you can start spotting the same patterns everywhere. And I wanna hear from you too. What's the creepiest thing you've ever noticed a smart device doing in your home? Drop it in the comments because I think some of these stories are going to make people realize just how deep this goes. Thanks for watching and like, comment, and subscribe so it shows the algorithm that you wanna see more of this content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.